what's up everybody welcome back to the channel hopefully you all are having a very blessed and wonderful day today we have a chill video where we're going to be talking about the recent shift in the landscape for suicide squad I killed the justice league i felt like this would be a nice thing to discuss so that's essentially why we're talking about it here in case you don't know a couple of days ago rocksteady did i would say quite possibly one of the most unexpected things that they could have and they lifted the nda agreement for the closed alpha test the reason for why they did it i'm a I, I, I can't really say I, I have no idea why they did it but them doing it in general was a very big deal because that's something that really just doesn't happen like at all like genuinely I could put mud I could put a solid amount of money down on us getting another play test and then letting us talk about that test over lifting the NDA for the close alpha that's how confident I felt about that now after word got out the community went nuts it was positive thoughts everywhere mostly people who didn't play the alpha are the ones who didn't really expect the floodgates to open like that because they didn't believe the game was any good or that the game was going to be as good as we said that it was we can talk about the test now so that definitely provides us with a bit more leeway on what we can and can't discuss we can't show any footage though so suicide squad has been in and out of a mixed bag of reception for the longest time and i gotta be honest promotion has not been the best right we've had some good times and we've had some real bad dark times and when i say that one of the times i'm referring to is the delay when they hit that six to seven month phase of just a media blackout we didn't hear anything at all they did come back however in november but in my opinion it wasn't really full force due to the whole strike issue with elon and twitter now we were happy that they were back but it still wasn't what it should have been we were being drip fed information in a sense and then we got access to the alpha which until last week was a big issue because of how well that alpha was actually received and nobody could discuss it without breaking in the end but like i said earlier that ended up getting lifted so this past week has been crazy and i'm going to explain why now this all started with the announcement of previews coming from creators and news outlets right and people were extremely curious about what it was that was going to be said you had the homies like the june and jay shock blast you had comic storian who i've also had here on the channel before funny enough you had game Informer, you had aztec cross ign your gamer and more IGN was the tip of the iceberg, if not a whole damn chunk of it, because their review, sorry, not review, preview, keep, I gotta remember those are two different things. Their preview of the game was barely positive, if not, it wasn't positive at all, right? They dunked on it pretty much, and that's the preview that got the most eyes on it during this time frame. Now, I can't really blame IGN too much, because I fully agree with the statement of they didn't have enough time to really play the game, right? everybody who was at the event they didn't have the time that we did all of us at home had days to play the game so everyone at the event only had hours to play and with a live service game that can be kind of tough to pick up a decent feel for in that short amount of time because you can just as easily be cut off right as you're really starting to find a groove with everything now if this was a single player story focused game or if they simply just had more time to really get their bearings and this was the same result that would have been understandable but what people are trying to figure out is how ign somehow walked away with a preview report that was mostly negative when everybody else either loved it or enjoyed their time to it and was looking to put more time in but still fairly voiced their concerns or complaints and various other things right that ign report made rounds and pretty much poured gasoline into an already raging negative fire that's surrounding the game not to mention the past five days they've been posting and reposting that same article which is conveniently titled we've played suicide squad and did not like it with an exclamation mark at the end this honestly to me is nothing more than negative engagement farming at that point and no matter the game the fact that they're doing this as a professional company is kind of wild and a bit petty to me but that's also part of the reason for why the gaming community kind of wants to leave IGN behind when it comes to stuff like this. Also, I'm just finding out that not only does IGN do this with other games, which would make sense because it's engagement farming, but they tend to go balls to the wall on games that they give a bad rating to, which doesn't help anyone at all. That's why people 
kind of now in this day and age tend to look at other creators or influencers more whenever previews or reviews are on the table but that's a double-edged sword because you have people who will just easily break in the yay or toss out leaks or do anything along those lines all for the sole purpose of pushing themselves and their what's the word in their platform forward right that's part of the reason why I try my best to be as honest and as fair and as professional as I can be. Granted, you know, I'm saying professional when my the whole image is a damn ski mask and a beanie. But if there's one thing I can assure is that whenever you do come to my channel, it's really nothing you'll hear from me. But honestly, because I don't really care to a lot of people to like me or my opinion this isn't high school granted the content creator space does feel like high school sometimes but this this ain't high school and i'm not trying to go back but let's get back on track so at this point it became more of a question of what more could rock city possibly lose they opened up the floodgates and everybody was shook you had people heading to twitter facebook discord youtube tiktok and they was going nuts everybody well mostly everybody has something well actually no 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 everybody has something to say about the alpha but more than a good portion of it was definitely positive because i said earlier it was like a good 75 to 80 percent positive 10 of maybe 15 percent that were that they liked it but it was still a lot of things they were sitting on the fence about and then the rest of that just didn't like it at all you had people talking about the traverse one how they was going dummy with uh captain boomerang you had people talking about how the gunplay uh felt and that it was smooth i was hearing comparisons to anthem and borderlands like they were saying it wasn't necessarily the best thing ever but it definitely was better than people expected and that's all that matters the story beats was good the squad definitely fits together their personalities mesh well and people were getting invested in the story and one thing everybody agreed on was one of the best things about the alpha which was the batman uh, museum exhibit mission where batman is picking each member of your squad off one by one and you get to experience what it's like to be on the other side as a bad guy who was absolutely helpless to stop him so now whenever you go back and play those old arkham games you gotta remember if you play suicide squad if you played the alpha or if you played the full game depending depending on you know whenever it is you see this video just know you've been in that same position before you've been helpless only to look up see somebody drop down on you and next thing you know you hanging upside down knocked out now there were some people who still didn't like the game or some people who did but were still on the fence regarding certain concerns they had but those complaints i actually like and because those complaints were more based than the hate crowd simply because it came after it came after those people had touched the game right they played it to the point as to where is they can fairly judge it and that's literally all i've been preaching you can say what you want but your opinion slash judgment doesn't hold any weight unless you've experienced the game for yourself it just doesn't no matter what you say unless you've actually touched it it doesn't count right it's just right it's, it's the same way like growing up whenever your mother tried to you know she tried to get you to try something new like a baked potato or something and you're like no nah, i don't like it you don't know what you don't like until you don't try it eat eat, eat the fucking potato like it's just also i had a baked potato f for the first time ever in my life uh the other day but we're not gonna talk about that uh let's move on <laughs> so people couldn't figure out where this positivity was coming from like legitimately the next few days that followed the com the community a essentially became rocksteady's and uh, promotional team they weren't like they, they wasn't posting on twitter like that they are now like at this very point in time but they wasn't really posting on twitter like that before although tiktok and instagram were definitely getting some solid love it still wasn't enough now word of mouth travels like no other and when the nda got lifted word of mouth spread like wildfire the whole nda conversation mixed with the previews the positive ones that is have started to convince a lot more people to give the game a shot or at the very least consider it what followed next also proceeded to change more minds and hearts people for the longest have been asking what is it rocksteady can do to make them stand out in this genre that's already filled with other games doing the same thing they got to take some risk and experiment and that's exactly what they're doing a few of the ways that a few of the ways that's being done contained some information that we got from the developer q a uh I'll, i'm not going to go through the whole thing i'm just going to name a couple of key things but if you want to check out what the entire nda was you can go ahead and check out my previous video where i went through the entire thing now 
if you're playing alone and you're not planning on well, if you're playing alone and you're not planning on playing certain people certain members of the squad you can replace those members with those of other players like actual players you can go to the leaderboards you can find some of the best players in the world you can pick up one of your friends that might be at work they on b shifts and they can't get back home right now you can pick up a, a, a favorite content creator that you might want to play with but you haven't had the chance with because you know they only play with subscribers or something like that anybody you want you can pick up their ai character and they will join you in that session social squad teammates will keep all of the gear cosmetics and talents that their original owners have equipped just as if you would have joined them in a, in a normal co-op session and the original owners of the ai will also get a kickback if their characters are used in someone else's game the next time they log on they will receive a small portion of the resources and loot that you earned while playing and it's also separate from the rewards that you get for yourself so it doesn't take away from the loot that you get while playing there are not that many games live service games to be exact that like that does is that has the system where you can play with people who aren't in your session another piece of information is you know level is gear in the community absolutely love this because this means we don't have to worry about being a neat freak when it comes to our inventory we don't got to worry about dropping a gun that we really like just because it's a weaker level we don't got to worry about being locked out of content just because we're not strong enough having gear without levels is a lot more major than people actually realize because you can get some good guns early on and then you can just keep them this game also has loadouts too you can just keep those guns and you can respec it you can put augments on it you can re you, you can re-roll it you can do all that stuff you can take the gun with you as you progress through your journey of the main story and in game and all the post launch content that continues we also got word on two of several in game modes called incursion missions and killing time which is a horror mode and in total right we have all of this at launch we have a paragon system that is infinite so you can make your characters in dlc characters more powerful after reaching level 30 level 30 is the max once you hit level 30 you you're just gonna keep going up your level is just gonna keep raising and 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 you'll get stronger each time uh like i said already said there's no gear levels uh metropolis so as you go along throughout the story in the post-launch seasons metropolis is going to evolve as the seasons come in the stories change and things of that nature I, uh, I forget the exact quote but in the q a i believe one of the developers specifically said that the reason for why it was stated like this is because brainiac has the power to brainiac has the ability to phase in portions of other worlds and then when you mix that in with the joker tease that we got where we're looking at you know joker's version of the daily planet that right there is a key indicator not well not too much of a key but it's pretty much like a teaser of just how badly for the better metropolis is going to change as the story continues on into post launch now we have decent gear right the gear and the perks that we have been seeing have been nuts like some of them are very wild the build crafting in the game seems kind of nutty uh, you have perk rerolls and crafting stat increases. I've talked about that. Loadouts. The traversal is decent. And we got some good weapons. The social squad feature. I already talked about that. Horror mode and strikes. The first season DLC was already teased, which is again Joker. Uh, we have full cross play and cross progression, so you can play with anyone you want wherever you want however you want we're going to be getting more new gear and weapons with dlc there are leaders and after mission reports friendly competitions things like that like for example whenever you're playing whenever you're playing with the squad whoever does the better out of that mission they become the new squad leader and they get to pick the mission uh you have customizable ui because people have been upset about the whole ui conversation that's also been going on this past week there are a lot of stuff here are things that other live service games either don't launch with don't get into way after launch or they have it but it's not as fleshed out as it should be my entire point here is that the past week has been the most positive week about the game since its original announcement and that's taken into account all of the negative 
that's been happening alongside of this what i don't like is how this is all happening a few weeks from release like i honestly believe this would have been a bit better if the promotion started earlier than it did because then there would have been really more time to go nuts with promotion like how i assume rocks that he wanted to but sadly enough that can't be changed at this point now the narrative is definitely changing however there are more people interested in picking up the game and there are more positive conversations is being had and a lot of that is the result of the past week now if this can lead well into the third insider episode where they're going to be talking about post-launch content and how we can expect the monetization to work and if that insider episode ends up being good i think it would be safe to say we are definitely locked in for launch and post-launch content because that's going to continue to spread even more positivity if their plans are clearly laid out and we know what to expect it's been very nice seeing the narrative shift because god knows we've seen just how bad things can get i myself i'm out here getting called a variety of names a few of which i won't repeat because i don't know how youtube gonna act about it simply because i i want people to give the game a fair chance right i also may or may not have called a bunch of people dumb because um uh, Hey, I may or may not have called a bunch of people dumb and said that they wasn't smarter than a fifth grader when I say plants have the ability to come back to life with enough care uh, was an actual scientific fact. I won't lie. It kind of worries me how many people were, were wrong about that. But I mean, yeah, that's the American education system, everybody. All in all, unless something major besides the third insider episode happens this just might be the last big positive push the game was going to get before release and while i wish it happened sooner i'm i'm happy that it's happening to begin with and that is starting to change a lot of minds and hopefully the full release can continue to do so but with that being said it's going to go ahead and bring us to the end of today's video hopefully you all have had a very great and decent time here let me know down in the comments below how do you feel about the current uh narrative of the game do you think minds are changing do you think people still feel the same what are you seeing out there in the suicide squad streets or better to put it in the streets of metropolis and again if you've enjoyed the video please remember to like share and subscribe and smack that notifications bell so you won't ever miss out on any of my suicide squad related content and i will catch y'all in the moonlight peace